Ideas for Creative Exploration, or ICE, is an interdisciplinary initiative for advanced research in the arts at UGA. Uh, so the arts being primarily visual arts, music, theater, dance, creative writing. And um, one of the things we've noticed in our 15 year history is through project grants and kind of curated conversations, uh, there's a real trend of uh, students, faculty, community members wanting to do meaningful, new creative work around issues of sustainability. And we're in the middle of a three-year faculty research cluster grant from the Wilson Center for Humanities and Arts, and we've made this kind of um, uh, environment plus arts idea one of the core concepts of what we can do with that uh, three-year grant. Um, so part of this uh, is in bringing people to campus that can really stimulate new ideas, like Amy Franceschini, who's part of a design firm called Future Farmers. They uh, have a successful design career, but then they do these projects on the side, like the San Francisco Victory Garden project, um, where they have cool design solutions, like these funky bikes and uh, internet applications that chart all the available places where things could be grown in San Francisco and uh, public uh, lands where things could be gleaned. Um, uh, and they, they show this work in museums like the Guggenheim and have this wonderful kind of crossover uh, practice. And uh, last spring we, we brought Cassie Metter to campus um, who's part of a company called Dance Exchange in Washington, D.C. We were really interested in a project she did called How to Lose a Mountain, uh, which uh, is, tracks her sort of journey uh, 500 miles from her house in the metro D.C. area to the uh, mountain in West Virginia that is the source of the coal that powers her house. And uh, it's such a, a wonderful project. Uh, it has this great backstory. She's a Georgia native, and in her, in her family, there's this story of how her great-grandfather lost a mountain in a poker bet, uh, and uh, connecting that up with this project. These uh, playing cards they created were ways of opening up conversations with people they met along the way, and this whole side project emerged called 500 Miles, 500 Stories. And then they, uh, at the, uh, destination here, um, they met this uh, person named Larry Gibson, who uh, his family plot of 50 acres is surrounded by 7,500 acres of mountaintop removal. And he created this um, Keepers of the Mountain Foundation uh, to bring awareness to these issues. And, uh, and he passed away in the, in shortly after that meeting. And there are a couple things here that are, I think, really profound for how we've been thinking about how we do uh, arts and arts research. One is, uh, they kind of built the support for this project through promising a big performance at the end, right? And that's kind of how it works with funding for the arts. You sort of promise something that's gonna have a big show and, and a lot of people will come to it. What was actually much more interesting was the process, the journey and all the kind of engagement that happened along the way. Uh, and then the other thing is that uh, this fellow, uh, Larry Gibson, you know, was kind of creating this foundation and land trust and in starting a project where he would never actually see the results in his lifetime. And this is really um, uh, very different from the way we tend to think about things in the arts. Uh, our focus is on the contemporary, having relevance in the current moment, gaining fame uh, in the art world. Uh, and this, I think, signals a profound shift here. How can we begin to think about arts and creative work and the kind of long-term impacts in future generations? Uh, we're going to bring Cassie Matter back again next month and hopefully um, uh, in, the, in the third year of our, uh, of our uh, grant. Okay, so a couple of things, new projects growing around here. Uh, looking at the campus as a laboratory for creative work. Uh, Driftmeyer Woods, uh, material reuse activities, and uh, even the Lamar Dodd building, which has many wonderful kind of sustainable features that we'll try to highlight through uh, new stories. The cool thing about art is we have a, a good 
um, connection uh, to a lot of this, uh, we have a way to talk about sort of the aesthetics and, and concepts. Uh, art can bring a nuanced uh, reading to things. This is, of course, uh, 1970, Spiral Jetty by Robert Smithson. Uh, also in 1970, this great art project, The Recycling Symbol, um, which was a, uh, uh, came about through a design competition. And uh, this has been called one of the most influential uh, photo environmental photographs, Earthrise, from the Apollo 8 mission. And, um, and this is a real paradigm shifter. When you see this, you see the world in a new way. And it's amazing that art and, cannot, art and technology can bring that about. But I think now we need to uh, sort of get beyond this sort of pseudo experience. We need to develop a deeper capacity to um, consider the complexities and nuances, and honestly, some of the depressing aspects uh, of sustainability. So I call up here as an example the 15th century practice of uh, kintsugi. Uh, this is the Japanese uh, repair of broken pottery that becomes a newly admired and appreciated aesthetic object. How can we create new narratives that uh, recognize and create beauty around the ways that we are healing the planet. Thank you.